Everybody's uncomfortable with that. It'll never make it out to the public, but I don't see any reason why you'll even show up on the video. So we're here to talk about WordPress MU. And before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the process because uh, Carol and I were talking about how there was definitely on my part some confusion about how to get to this point that we are at today where I'm able to present to you. And all the instructions are very uh, clearly listed on Blackboard, for example, on that uh, discussion board forum where we are, where you saw my proposal for WordPress MU, for example. Um, here's the process as I understand it, and certainly there can be any correction if, if I'm wrong. You come up with an idea. You present the idea uh, with your backing information in hand or in head, right? You know what your, what your argument is going to be for this, and you go to your supervisor. In my case, that was Carol. I didn't do that the first time. What I did was I just put it up, thinking that, uh, yeah, democracy. The problem with that is that potentially Carol could be, um, what's the word? Surprised, negatively surprised. Don't surprise your boss. Was was the and and not that she was surprised because I'm sure that she had heard about this and various WordPress MU as an idea of coming. mine was was not a new idea. It had been around for a while. But this proposal process means that we have to follow a certain path. And the path, as I understand it now, is that you write out this proposal with some backing information. You go to your supervisor. You discuss it with your supervisor. There is a certain level of approval that happens during that conversation. It does not go up on Blackboard until your supervisor says, yes, I'm ready to see this up on Blackboard so that we can all have a discussion about this. Then seven days at least passed so that you have the opportunity to talk about this idea on Moss, right? Then you get the opportunity at some point after those seven days pass, and those seven days have passed for WordPress MU, to present, which is where we are at today. Does anybody have any questions about the process of um, proposing ideas in our in our pilot for change management? Yes. I just have something to add. I mean, one of the values I think of discussing it and bringing it to your to someone else to my attention is we didn't I didn't change conceptually what he was doing, but we added some things that and had a very I think productive discussion about how to uh, make it make the value more ob obvious to uh, the broader department. So that would be my only act. And uh, some of the things that came out of that discussion included exemplars of other people using WordPress MU in an academic environment, potential um, uses that we that I had not discussed on my sheet, that I hadn't really thought to discuss because I figured I would be doing that here, and I will be. But you just have to think it out, put it out on paper. If your supervisor doesn't feel like it's enough, you may have to go back and bring it back again. That's part of what, what this hierarchy is about, is about approval and process. So now, question. yes? What happens if you feel that you have sufficient substance in your request, but your manager continues to deny your request? Just as I don't think that that would happen. Not <laughs> you. You would never do that. I, I don't think that that would happen, but if it did, there would probably be a reason that your supervisor would have the right to, to, to state. Would you ever, what I'm asking is more, would you ever have a right to then take it to some other level? Probably not. Okay. We talked about that, we talked about that at another round table, and that's what you do. Okay. Say respectfully, I disagree, I'm going to take it to another level, and your supervisor should be supportive of that. The idea, the idea being that, s that you're not the only person responsible for your ideas being right. put up for change. The, it's also you and your supervisor. The, and this, you know, that would be and the territory else. for us, Matt, but the one thing I also said there is it would be respectful for you to take your supervisor with you if you were going to escalate it oh, and okay. discuss it openly in the interest yeah, no. of transparency. Okay. So right. that would be, you know, we respectfully disagree. Let's take it to the next level and take it to the next level. Right? And we compare that to That's where we are now, which is you know, we don't have anything oh, yeah. as far as process is concerned. So until it's broken, I think that we, we should try and run with what we have. And I'm very excited about the opportunity to, to present this to you. So. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks.
So this is actually an adaptation of a presentation that I give just about WordPress in general and talking about blogging in general to faculty. But I've adapted a little bit so that I can talk in general about how WordPress, I think, can help us here at Rider University in our offices, in our faculty offices, in our departments, in everywhere, in every facet. Because blogs are more than just web pages. For example, they're database driven. They have a search engine built in that is running from the second that you add content to it. And you can thematically change it. So for example, you can beautify your presentation of ideas in many different ways, thousands of ways, uh, from the minute that you install it. Because part of the benefit of having something like WordPress at the core is that you are not the only developer. You are not the only person who's working on this. There are thousands and thousands of people who are working on graphics, who are working on plugins, who are working on additions to the software that you can benefit from. You can't necessarily benefit in the same way from WordPress.com which is actually running WordPress MU. If you go to WordPress.com or if you have a WordPress.com account, you're actually using WordPress uh, MU right now. Um, WordPress.com is a collection of thousands of blogs that are all using WordPress at their core. And you may have noticed, if you know the difference between WordPress.org, which is a locally installed version of WordPress, versus WordPress.com, it's that WordPress.com has some limits to it. The limits usually include things like plugins and usually includes things like certain themes are not there and you cannot necessarily use those themes. The way that you begin to use some of those thousands of themes that are available that are not available in WordPress.com is to install WordPress.org locally. Many people may not have a server experience that would allow them to do that. Many people would not necessarily want to get up to speed on using PHP, MySQL and other technologies required in order to have WordPress.org running locally. We take care of all that for everybody by installing WordPress MU. In other words, only a few of us would need to know enough about PHP, MySQL, etc. in order to get it running on our server. And then for everybody else in the Rider University community, everybody with an EasyPass account, you would automatically have access to a full-blown WordPress.org style blog, which means all the plugins that are available would be available according to our controls. In other words, if you want to plug in, you would probably make a request to somebody like Chris or somebody like myself or whoever will work all that out. And then that plugin might get installed for all of us to use. But compare that to a situation where somebody's installing it on their own install without any controls in place. They might put a really dangerous plugin in place and might bring down a part of, or all of our network just because they didn't know any better. By having WordPress MU, we have some controls in place that allow us to control what goes out there under Rider University's name. The minute you have a blog running, you have RSS feeds, which I won't go into great detail about, but for those of you who already know, um, where RSS is essentially a way for somebody who doesn't have to visit your site to get information about what's going on on your site. Uh, when we were had an RSS feed based, um, when we had a blog and WordPress dot org blog based on media.writer.edu, um, we used to have RSS feeds for all the Westminster uh, stuff that came onto that server, for example. That content is still there, but no longer can we have anybody subscribe to that RSS feed because we had to take down the blog. If WordPress MU gets installed, we'll be able to reinstate that media blog, possibly. That would be one of my first things I would love to see happen. And then we would be able to allow people to subscribe to RSS feeds again. There are many things like this that happen immediately as soon as we have WordPress MU running. Tags. So does anybody know what a tag is? OK. A tag is a way of giving a label or multiple labels to a piece of information in a contextual uh, meta way. In other words, I might have a post that has to do with music and video and John Lamasny and work and Rider University and all those things. I can list all those tags next to any piece of uh, content that I put up on my blog so that people might find my content by searching on Rider University. They don't necessarily have to search for the content of my blog directly. They can look for all the stuff that's associated with the tags that I attach to that content. I can do that with WordPress. Links. We can very easily uh, provide links to these blogs the minute they exist. In other words, somebody wants to advertise something, they immediately have a URL. That's the whole reason behind our users.writer.edu right now, which is some place that I think that WordPress MU could be installed. 
When somebody creates an account on users.reddit.edu, though, through our existing infrastructure, it means they have to know HTML, they have to know SFTP, they have to know a lot more than they probably want to know. And we are not necessarily a great resource for them to learn about that because we don't want to um, continue to push people to have to know HTML when we're really moving away from that uh, technologically and societally. We, we, there are simpler ways to do this. You can create a community very easily using a WordPress MU blog. Once you create this blog, it essentially becomes this centralized place for some idea and all related ideas that you want to present there. You can have discussions right out of the box. You can very easily turn on or turn off the ability for people to reply to ideas that you put in this space. Again, users.writer.edu, if I tell you that you have to build out a way for people to feed back to you, you're going to have to know something about PHP or Perl, or, and, and you're going to have to be allowed to use Perl in the box, which we don't currently allow. So there are a lot of reasons why this is a lot safer. We, we begin to know everything about what's going on in that feedback process through discussions, where if we're trying to allow people to do that on their own, it means they not only have to know Perl, but we have to allow it. That's a really dangerous idea for us. We want to have some control over that. But we also want people to have the ability to do discussions. Right? We want this to be a place where people go and talk about Rider University and talk about the important ideas that they find important. We want people to be able to share. There's the ease of publishing. I was just talking about having no HTML and SFTP. Many of the people in this room know all about it. Some of you don't. And you wouldn't want to have to go over that hurdle in order to start publishing. But you might have ideas that you want to see up on the web. WordPress on you is a way to do it. And you can extend it very, very deeply by using embedding of other services that exist out there, such as YouTube. If you have a YouTube account and you decide to start putting video up there, like I am with this video, if everybody's cool with it, I can then take that video from YouTube, embed it in my personal blog, and people just go to my blog to see my YouTube account. They don't have to visit YouTube separately. They just go to lamazny.com and they'll be able to click on play and start to see my video right away. And I'm not doing anything except for using YouTube and embedding that YouTube video with WordPress which you'd be able to do with WordPress MU, if we allow it. Why WordPress? In my opinion, and anybody who knows anything about my technological philosophy, I'm all about open source. I really like the idea of open source because it means that it's extensible and more extensible and more extensible as people build and add to it. Question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as people add to it, it means that I get to benefit from what people have added. If I get to um, add back into that collection of open source, it means everybody else gets to benefit from the stuff I added. We are building something here. And so when we say that it's free, very often people say, well, open source, that's freeware, right? It's not freeware. Freeware is very often proprietary and protected, and you don't get to see the source code. With open source, you get to see the source code, get to modify it, and usually get to redistribute it as your own as long as you properly reference the original creator of the code. Um, so we say it's free as in freedom. In other words, I'm free to do with this code as I wish. It's also free as in beer, as in I didn't have to pay anything for this really, really cool thing, and I'm getting all these benefits from it. So it's neat, but it's also democratic. It's also exciting in that way. It's hosted, it's extensible, and it's popular. This part of the presentation is really for WordPress.com, where I was talking to faculty where I'm saying, you don't have to host it yourself. But it's still true for WordPress MU users at Rider University. They wouldn't have to find a host. They wouldn't have to determine how to set up Apache, <laughs> how to set up PHP, how to set up MySQL. It's extensible, meaning that we can add things to it. It's not just what you get out of the box. It's all those things that we've been talking about, plugins, extensions, embedding. And it's popular. Many people who have a blog have WordPress blogs. And so it means that as time goes on, we're really helping students, for example, possibly to get experiential knowledge about real world applications of technology. And there is a CMS capability, although we wouldn't replace Red Dot with it anytime soon. Um, the CMS capability essentially talks about the ability not only to have a chronological blog, but also to have what WordPress calls pages, which are static pages, where we might create a um, on our personal blog on WordPress, we might have our blog, which is like all the stuff that I did this month and with the latest thing up in, in the top space. 
And then next to that, I might have pages such as resume, such as um, important things on my to-do list, on you know whatever, that don't change and don't update regularly. So, for example, here is an example of a uh, podcast that I do, and here's also an example of the easy ability to embed audio right into the podcast. You can also see also down here that there is this um, chat window. Why is that freaking out on me? Here's a search engine. Here are some static pages. As opposed to the blog, we can go back to the blog. There's supposed to be a uh, scroll over here, but so adding posts there are several several ways that you can add a post one of them is a bookmarklet which is essentially a bookmark that you save that has a bunch of javascript attached to it I can highlight text on a page of something that I find really interesting. Think about it from an academic perspective. I'm doing research for a paper, or I'm doing research as part of a classroom blog, and I want to add a piece of information that might be useful for everybody in the class. I find it on some page, I highlight it, and I click a bookmark. That bookmark automatically logs me into the blog, posts my content, and gets me out of there, like in two clicks. So you can do it by bookmark. You can do it directly, which essentially means that you can go into the blog, you can log in, and you can add content directly. But it's very much like creating an email. It's very much like um, going into any other administrative interface that we're all very comfortable with, like Blackboard. When we add content to Blackboard, it's very much like the same way that we add content to uh, a blog. We might do it by email. I don't think we'll probably implement that here, but the feature is available. You could actually send content to an email address that you would sort of keep secret and the blog would automatically check that email account and anything that gets sent to that account would automatically show up on the blog. You could do it by phone. There are actually ways that you can send to a third party service and the content automatically gets dropped in. Now imagine if we had a unified messaging system and we had an account that we could point a blog to that automatically shared anything that we sent to this particular voicemail number, like you know snow closing or something like that. There are a lot of ways that we could use that. There's also the ability to draft. If you uh, write three paragraphs and you want to write four, but you're not ready to write the fourth one yet, you can just say save this, and then you can come back to it later and publish it later. Uh, adding links. I don't know why I was talking about links so much in this presentation. but And there's password protection. So if I have content that I'm not ready to make available to the world, like let's say this video, um, I could say this requires a password in order to see this content. And I talk uh, with faculty about this all the time because not everybody wants to make their entire life available. Very often when we're dealing with students, we have to have some passwords in place so that not everything is available. This is an example of the um, WordPress.com, whoops, WordPress.com interface. Right, so I can go into a dashboard, for example, for Phil with Manor. If I want to write content, I click on write. And as I said, it's very much like an email. There's a subject, there's a body, there's a WYSIWYG editor, there's a code editor. So if you wanted to do something fancy in HTML or something like that, you can do it here. Um, Here's where you put tags. Remember we were talking about tags, in other words, pieces of information that you can have people search on instead of the words in your content. And here we have categories. So once you start to build up content in this particular blog about a series of categories, you can add those categories here. Categories and tags are very much sort of a similar idea, but uh, tags don't necessarily follow throughout your entire blog, whereas categories do. If you want to add categories, you can just click on here and add. Here's where we do passwords. Here's where we give a little um, short name for the post. 
here's where we can upload content. So we can upload JPEGs, we can upload audio files, we can do all sorts of things that normally you would have to know a lot more in order to um, do these things in static HTML. Here's that bookmark that I was talking about. And so when we click on it, it automatically sort of brings you to this interface with that, co with that highlighted content already pasted into your body. And as I said, if I wanted to save this as opposed to publish it, I could do it here. I'm not going to do that, though. Adding pages is very similar. So it's static content, like a resume, a timeline, uh, sticky content, stuff that you want to be there all the time, not go down over time, like a blog does. It defines a blog versus a site. So the idea of uh, blogging is really that continuous feed of data. A site is really usually static pages. WordPress brings both of those sort of powerful interfaces together and allows you to do more than one thing. In this respect, it's sort of a throwback to a Web 1.0 style of thinking. In other words, blogs are much more about getting, keeping up to date and pages are much more about static content. Here's an example of a static page. Right. And here are some other static pages. This is actually a WordPress.org installation on my own hosted site off campus. Right? So I have a whole bunch of things going on on my blog, but here's one. If I wanted to chat with myself, I could say, hey, how are you doing? And um, right now, on my desktop in my office, I just got a prompt for myself to talk. Right? Here is my speaking engagements. So we're talking about embedding in order to enhance your functionality on your blog. This is my Google Calendar. And I just took the embed from my Google Calendar and just placed it into this page. And so WordPress doesn't have this functionality, although WordPress does have a calendar. I don't have to have WordPress have this functionality. I can rely on other third-party services because software as a service is a growing idea. And I don't have to worry about building this out. I just have to worry about pointing to it wherever it is. I don't know how much of this we would actually get into here. And we probably would want to restrict stuff like this because there are probably some dangerous things you could do with this if you really tried. But the minute we start cutting off those things means that the minute that that's the minute this blog becomes a little bit less useful. So choosing tags, we talked very briefly about tags, but essentially they're the same in a sense as those categories we were talking about. It's folksonomy or taxonomy by the folk, meaning that I choose the tags that I want in order to describe this content. Matt, you probably are uh, pretty familiar with tags. Do you yeah. use, use tags a lot? Sure. And what do you use tags for? Oh, uh, boy. Um, well, to delineate a variety of different content, say if I wanted to know like, like you would with categories, say a series of videos or a specific series of audio clips, um, image postings, all, all sorts of stuff. Do you, have a of content. do you have a delicious account? No. So, does anybody here use delicious? I know that you do. Um, I use it as a reader. Use it as, I'm sorry? Explain delicious. Delicious is, it's easier for me to show, it really is. Um, Delicious is a, a social bookmarking service. And what this means is that instead of keeping my bookmarks here, I keep my bookmarks on Delicious. And the benefit to that is that they're available to me anytime I'm connected to the internet. And the other benefit is, even though you're not me, you get access to my bookmarks. The reason I'm showing the bookmarks here, though, is because I wanted to talk about tags. So as I add bookmarks to the site, it gives me the opportunity to associate tags with that content as I add it. So when I come back here and I'm forced to look at 1,298 bookmarks, I'm going to say, I wanted to find that thing about, you know, uh, blogging. Well, all I have to do is go down to my blog tag, and it shows me only things that have been tagged with blogs. The same is true for WordPress. You can tag all of your posted content with tags so that you can find it easier later, even though you might have 1,300 posts on your blog. Okay?
here's some uh, tag clouds. This is another way of demonstrating um, the power of tags is that uh, very often you can generate a tag cloud that says out of this group of uh, tags, the ones that are used most often, I want you to show as larger. Here's another example. None of these are working today. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Right, so here's a visual sort of representation of the importance of certain tags versus others. This is the sort of thing that, that makes these tools a little bit more powerful in finding what's important. In other words, if I took my tags, my tags off of my blog and put them into a tag cloud generator, it would be able to visually show you what's most important on my site. Right? In this case, it's Google and mapping and conferences and web 2.0 and open source, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Enabling and disabling discussions proposed. So you might be wondering, why would I want to have a discussion about a post entry? You know? Well, it's to, it's to start to get some feedback. And it's to have a conversation that we don't currently have the opportunity to have. In any of our situations where we're offering people these static uh, pages on users.writer.edu, if they want to have a discussion, it's just simply not going to happen. It's, it's too difficult to implement, and we don't really make it very easy anyway because the technologies required for that kind of interaction are relatively dangerous. And so we lock them down. With WordPress, we'd be able to open them up to this degree where you'd be able to start a conversation about any topic. In the case of Westminster, for example, somebody might want to give a really great compliment to a particular performance that we have on our media feed on that post. And so somebody could say, wow, really great job. You can have intermediary levels of uh, discussion restriction too. You can say, no one gets to post a, a discussion entry unless I've already approved a previous entry into the discussion. Or um, nobody gets to comment on this post at all. Or everybody in the world can post whatever they want. Or um, I want to approve every post that comes in. So you have a really finite way of controlling the way that um, content gets onto your blog. Because what you don't want is, is some punk coming along and saying, writer sucks 24 times on every post, right? We can prevent that. So adding media, we can link to an MP3 from basically anywhere. Any static HTML page can link to an MP3. On WordPress and you, we can actually upload an MP3 and keep it hosted there. We probably would not do that because we have the benefit of having media.writer.edu, which is the big hard drive that we can essentially point to with a media blog and every other blog on WordPress and you, and allow media to do a really good job of presenting media and allow WordPress and you to do a really good job of um, pointing to that media. Or we can do embeds and um, this is something that's really exciting right now. I showed you like the Google Calendar, for example, but you can do the same thing with YouTube, as I said. And so instead of having that stuff sitting on the blog, I'm just pointing to possibly media.writer.edu and showing that content so I can just press play and start to enjoy that content without having to go anywhere else but that blog. I'm not going to go into that. So here's some example of some sidebar modules. Um, Talkbox, which I know some of you know about just because I, I actually suggested it to some users, but we don't support it, so uh, we won't go too much deeper with that. But you can embed a Talkbox account uh, piece of code so that if you have a webcam and I have a webcam, we can have a video discussion right now. All we need is the internet between us. And all you have to do is visit this page, and if I'm connected, you can say, Yeah, there's no camera here. Say, video mail, John. And if I had a webcam, I'd be able to send you a video mail. Another example, though, is to call me right now. I don't have a camera. But right now, I'm getting a prompt on my desktop over in Fine Arts 137 to, you know, have a video chat with somebody. 
and all somebody had to do was come here and click or go to lamazny.com and click and all of a sudden we're talking. We weren't doing that before. <laughs> so I can imagine for the help desk, for example, if you want to have the ability to have a chat, you can use Mevo. If you want to have a video chat, you can use TalkBox. There are a whole bunch of things that we can look at more seriously, possibly through change management process, in order to provide these kinds of functionalities. I'll sign into Mevo here just so you can see what I'm talking about. These are, but Mevo, part of what Mevo does is it manages all these, all these messaging accounts for me. <coughs> What, cut myself off? So essentially what I did was I logged in in one place to this website and it included, it showed me, why, why wouldn't I? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So Although people are on all these different accounts, like AOL Instant Messenger and Yahoo and MSN, um, I'm able to, to talk to them all right here, right now. So when I talk to you over AIM, I'm usually using this interface, right? Um, the benefit to this is that I can embed that chat window that I showed you here. Finally, just let me very quickly talk a little bit about WordPress MU. Um, WordPress, the difference between WordPress and WordPress MU is that WordPress MU allows you to install more than one blog as though it was one blog instance. So there's not a whole lot to WordPress MU. The benefit to an administration uh, system is that we have control over all those blogs with one install. And we can control in a finite way how people sign up for those blogs. I don't think the question is whether or not people at Rider University should be using blogs. It's like, how do we prevent that from bringing down our network? And one of the ways that we can do it is by having a centralized interface and start to um, allow people to use things, use these things in a controlled way. Because they can already do it uncontrolled somewhere else. But we want this to be a rider-centric thing, right? That's really all I have to say. I really appreciate your opportunity for listening. and. I hope we have a really nice discussion afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.